Tonight on our front, the night in shining about to the rescue of the railway sector said to be in comatose. We have summoned the CEO of the Railways Development Authority to account for his stewardship. My guest today, I'll be telling more about after this break. My name is Raymond Alqua. My guest today is a lawyer who has spent most of his working life in the railway industry in the United Kingdom. Richard Dedon Dombo, you will come to our front. Thank you so much. And this sector has seen in more recent years some amount of money being pumped in there, way higher than it used to be in times past. But what is there to show for it? That is why Richard will be telling us more about it. But even before we go, I mean, I notice your surname strikes a chord. Are you in any way related to the SD Dombo, as in the Danko Buzia Dombo traditions, SD Dombo? Well, it's a, it's a, a giveaway, isn't it? <laughs> I, <laughs> well, um, I am his direct son. Oh, I see. Yeah, Chief SD Dumbo. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't know that he <laughs> was almost in government in any part of it this way. So is that why you are in this job? Oh, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, yes, as you said, I am a barrister by, by profession and training. Um, but in the United Kingdom, I uh, joined the railway sector in uh, 1994. So after 2017, when I got my appointment to uh, assume this position in Ghana, I'd been working for 23 years in the railway sector, unbroken. Okay, 23 years. 23 years. So, so I got this job not because of the name, mm -hmm. certainly not. I've got the railway background. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I, I was also an active party member of the United Kingdom. In fact, the first vice chairman of the UK branch of the oh, NPP. Yes. That's, that's interesting yeah. to know. Now, let me get this straight because there's a lot of talk about mm. what's supposed to happen. Now, when the colonial master left, we had 946 or so kilometers of rail lines. Mm -hmm. The system somewhat, some way became a bit messed up. Indeed, I know you have described the railroad industry prior to 2017 as being in a comatose. Why do you think it was like that? And what was the extent of deterioration prior to that time? Well, thank you. Um, indeed, the colonial administration left for Ghana a total of 947 kilometers. Uh, and uh, I've got a map here. If your cameras could zoom in, you will see the extent to which okay. it is, if you can see very well, it is this red line here. It's almost like an, an inverted V. That's true. That is all the, uh, the, um, the railway lines ever left for us, 947 of it. Mm -hmm. And it, the British were strategic in why they chose this chose that particular, that particular yeah. pattern. So it goes from this this is where they call the, yeah, the Western Line, mm -hmm. yeah, that is from Tekradi through to Kumase. Yeah. And of course, on that Western Line, we have gold, timber, cocoa, manganese, bauxite. And of course, there's a passenger element of it as well. That's true. So it was strategically cited. Then we have what is called the Eastern Line, mm -hmm. which is from Tema Accra through in, uh, Chimota and Sawam and Koko through to Kumase. Yeah. Again, a huge uh, passenger network. Mm -hmm. So those who reminisce about the past as regards, oh, we should join the sleeper train, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. It was that Eastern Line that comes yeah, through. Yeah, 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 that kind of thing. So this is what they left for us. Okay. Now, in terms of the state of comatose that are I aptly described the state of the sector as at January 2017 when His Excellency President Akufuado assumed office. Um, the first step he took was the creation of, of the standalone Ministry of Railways Development. Well, yeah. As while we had what was called Ministry of Transport, under which we have the uh, railways, aviation, uh, ports and harbors, metro mass, etc. Now, with the decoupling of the railway sector, standalone, and again with aviation, the needed focus that the sector needed, or the needed focus that was required in the sector, uh, uh, was attained. Now, wh why was the sector as bad as it was until 2017? A number of reasons. The fact that it came under that huge umbrella is one, one reason. Put it this way, the Minister of Finance in his budget allocation or budget allocation to various sector ministries would just give to the Ministry of Transport, gigantic as it was, mm -hmm. just one allocation. That's true. Which was now to be split among these uh, 
huge sectors. Aviation is huge on its own, and so is uh, railways. Now, when we talk about the investment element in the railway sector, that brings water to the eyes. It's eye-watering. And that, for them, I put into context the fact that the railway sector could never, ever thrive under the railway ministry. Uh, sorry, under the uh, transport sector mm. with the kind of amounts that we allocated. We're talking of an average, an average of about $4 million per kilometer to construct. That is a starting point. And, um, and if you look at the fact that maybe Ministry of Transport in its entirety would, would probably be given the equivalent in dollar terms of let's say about six to eight million dollars for the year. And one kilometer takes about four, four million dollars. So basically every year basically we are, we're doing at most two kilometers. Are you kidding me? Amount of money. The amount I'm talking it. about was yes. not for the railway sector. I'm talking for the, for the transport. Entire ministry. <laughs> yes. You know, That's transport what the of that amount to the, 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 the important sector called railways. Well, so there we go. So in order for us to get a handle on this very important and sleeping giant, mm -hmm. the first step was what His Excellency President Kufado did, i.e. the creation of the standalone Ministry of Railways. With that, as a statement of intent, in the very first budgetary allocation to the sector in 2017, from 2016, where the sector was given 20 million Ghana cities, that is the sector, from its share from the Ministry of Transport, the standalone ministry got no less than 780 million <laughs> cities in the very first budgetary allocation. 718 million cities okay. to, the, uh, to the railway sector alone. That was a statement of intent. In fact, this money was used in the first year for exploration. When I say exploration, the sector minister, myself, and deputies, you know, traverse the world to see best practice, you know, which, which countries like Israel, you know, um, people ask why Israel. Well, of course, it's a developing country in de by definition, and, all, and they don't have any significant railways to note, but they are developing. So we can copy from such countries. Then, of course, we went to even more developed places like the United Kingdom, Russia, etc., where they have real, real infrastructure to talk about. That money facilitated all of these trips. Toward the end of uh, uh, December 2017, the residual sum that had to be used or, or lost, we converted it into the construction of a railway, uh, of, uh, of the start of the construction of the railway sector in the Western Line. Mm -hmm. So we started, we started with Kojokrum to uh, Eshim, which is uh, five kilometers, and that was the equivalent of $20 million, you know, okay. uh, residual from, from, from the 780 million Ghana cities that was left. Now, going back again to uh, having established. It was literally, you know, abandoned. The sector ministers of the past did not give it the required focus. Why? Because, no one, the, you know, it wasn't considered a cash cow. I mean, if I'm a, <laughs> a transport minister and I have DVLA under me, you know, and, and, and stuff like that, I probably would be, be looking to where it is. But that simply reflected the lack of understanding of the important role the railway sector plays in any country's economic development. If that understanding was you know, was uh, realized by past uh, uh, administrations, I'm sure that, you know, they would not, you know, leave it like some abandoned uh, stepchild. In fact, they, it would have been given the kind of focus it has been given now. And I believe that as of 2017, that the sector would have been far ahead. But mm. that's where we are. Now, I'll, I'll come to it, but there are important things that were stipulated about this sector. And I'm looking at, for example, the 2019 budget. The finance minister says there has been a change in the sector from a dying colonial rail network system and has been re-energized into a proper railway sector. That's what the finance minister said. I'll be asking about what has specifically been done okay. in this area pretty soon. Okay. Equally instructive is that when you look at the manifesto of the NPP way back in 2016. Mm -hmm. It talked about the development of a modern rural network with strong economic linkages. The western and the eastern lines will be completely overhauled. 
This will facilitate the haulage of bauxite, manganese, cement, and it mentions all of the other things. Mm -hmm. The rehabilitation of the Asian line in particular will also facilitate the operation of the Buankra inland ports, which has been rendered inoperable as a result of the non-functioning of that particular line. Mm -hmm. There was also the intent to develop an integrated light rail transit system. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where I'm coming to you from. Okay. Expand the rail network to the north of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Let's start from the western and the eastern lines. What has been done so far? Let's start from the western line. Yeah. I think in my last uh, uh, answer, I did say the residual sum from the 2017 budgetary allocation, which amounted to $20 million, was plowed into the start of the construction of the standard gauge line on the western line, commencing from Kojokrom through to uh, sorry, Kojokrom through the Asia. Mm -hmm. um, the president in his uh, State of the Union address in 2018, just like he did in 2017, which announced the, the uh, five kilometers, also announced in the 2018 an additional 17 kilometers of new standard gauge construction on okay. the Western Line. Mm -hmm. That totals 22, and it is uh, being undertaken by this Israeli firm called Amandi. Um, subsequent to that, in April of this year, the Minister, the minister of Railways, the former uh, Honorable Joe Gaita and myself were in China, and I signed um, a contract with a Chinese group called Wuju uh, for $500 million for 100 kilometers to commence from Manso, where Amandi's contract finishes. The kilometer 22 is where Amandi finishes. Yeah. So from kilometer 23 up to 100 kilometers uh, bends, i.e. it terminates around uh, uh, Dunquo, 100 kilometers. That has been signed. And it was under the facility of the CDB loan, Chinese Development Bank loan, which is, you know, common knowledge out there that uh, a three million dollar contract was, I mean, so loan facility was obtained from CDB way back in 2017 under the uh, presidency of, um, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, John Atta Mills. Mm. Um, out of which one one billion was released, the other two was withheld until 2017. When His Excellency Vice President um, uh, Ali, <laughs> Vice President uh, uh, Mao Mao yes. went to China, and uh, the China was quite pleased with the, you know, the the signs of stability, economic stability in Ghana. They decided, okay, you know what, we'll be releasing the two. It took another year in uh, October 2018 when His Excellency, the President himself, Nana uh, Kufuado, uh, went to China together with his Chinese counterpart. They signed the protocol to release the two billion outstanding. I see. Out of the two billion that was promised to be released, the Minister of Finance, out of the goodness of his heart, you know, decided that one billion was going to be given to the railway sector. Mm -hmm. So, but he needed to know how we we're going to uh, dis uh, disburse that sum. So, between the minister and I and the uh, deputies, we decided that 500 million will be plowed onto the Western Line, which is what I've just talked about, the Wuju okay. one, and the other 500 million on what is called the Central Spine. The Central Spine originates from Kumasi, heading toward the north. Mm -hmm. So that is the Western Line in terms of what has been done in the Western Line. So we have two things happening in the Western Line. We have, uh, first and for foremost, let me introduce to you the, the fact that we are not work, uh, working you know, uh, off the cuff. We have what is called the Railway Master Plan of Ghana. Yeah, it's been launched. Uh, oh, yeah, 2013 that, yes. it was, yes. Yeah. And I've just, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 signed for a review of it, and the review is far advanced. Okay. Now, under the master plan, there are six phases. Phase one talks about rehabilitation of the existing lines, which is the, the inverted V that I showed you. Mm -hmm. um, so on the western line, phase one has been launched, i.e. the rehabilitation of the existing but dilapidated line between uh, Takradi port and uh, Takwa. That is the limit of the rehabilitation to date. That is ongoing. It has been done or completed? It's ongoing. Okay. What yeah. percentage do you have now? Um, in terms of percentage, um, to be frank, my sister company, people do not know that we have, I have a sister company. I am the Ghana Railway Development Authority. That's uh, the authority that I am the chief of. Yeah. Then I have a sister company called the Ghana Railway Company Limited. Mm -hmm. Company Limited as opposed yeah. to Development Authority. I guess you. Now, the Company Limited um, have the personnel. I own the, uh, so my, uh, the authority own the, the assets. Okay. My sister company have the personnel, they do the operations. Mm -hmm. And uh, we decided to, uh, to 
expand their role a bit beyond operations, mm -hmm. i.e. get them beyond just maintenance, but to get them also to, to do a bit of construction. So we signed uh, a contract with them to do the rehabilitation. So they are doing the rehabilitation. So in terms of percentage, they can best advise, but um, it's probably, this is, don't quote me on it, but it's probably in the region of about 60% uh, uh, complete, 60 to 80 percent complete. Why do I say I so? I want a definite figure. Yeah, because specifically. I, I, I couldn't say so because. Okay, so because, because, out of the, because remember. Yes, I the, wanted to re just re broaden this space. Re remember, yes. the, the, these guys are not by nature railway contractors. Mm -hmm. We have, what do you call it, uh, 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 polished their role, i.e., trying to make make the sector even more thriving. With, you know, i.e., the people who are already on board with long years of experience of maintenance I get you. can easily do maintenance work in that regard. I get you. So if they are the same persons constructing or who, who've com done the completed work between Accra and Tema, mm -hmm. and they're the same persons involved in the Accra to install one rehabilitation, remember the, the sector was totally gone. And so they are doing that one. And so, and in, insofar as we do not want to rush things, much as the public and the press and whatnot keep asking, mm -hmm. give us percentages, give us timelines, but the realist that I am, and knowing very well the press with your long memories, you say the chief executive sat here and said this. But I have a couple of references to make to, but yeah. I'm not there yet. Yeah, yes. please. All right. So essentially, I'm not going to be able to give you, or I'm not going to give you any percentage, just, uh, just to say that with the, com the near completion of the Accra in Sawam line. Near completion. Near completion. Because we... We were shut down in August 2017. Yes. We have been conf confronted with certain realities. You know, the, the, the what do you call the... Um, the Galamse effect is also on that, on, on that, also on that side. There are some places where the, 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 sub, the subsoil is so terribly you know, degraded that it requires a lot more than just you know, putting ballast and sleepers you know, on it. So, so when are we going to be able to use the Accra in Sawam stretch? Um, my, uh, what do you call it? the Director of Regulations and Assurance at the, at the, sect, at the uh, Railway Development Authority um, ha has been on site to see the work done to date by uh, Ghana Company Limited, and uh, he's advised some, you know, some some further works to be done. Until those works are done, which will require some uh, what you call soft, soft soil or soft structure fortifications, which is ongoing, which requires you know budget. You remember, it's all, everything has to do with budget. I I'll come yeah. talk about the money, but yeah. the question mm. I asked was. As we sit here today, yeah. this is, we are in October 2019. Yes. The first term of this government, mm -hmm. if it were again an extension, it would be dependent on the election. Yeah. The rest of the term of this government is ending next year. That's right. We're barely a year to go. Mm -hmm. I'm asking, when can me and others, commuters, use the Accra in Sawam stretch? When? Well, like I said, it's, it's not a matter of snapping your finger. I've just told you, you know about the budget. But is it a point that you, I, you I, can I, see? I'm, 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 I'm you, looking you, you, at the figures you, right before me. Right, tell for me. example, mm -hmm. I know that in the year 2016, the approved budget for the particular sector was 11 million cities. Right. Only 10 million was released. 2017 was 580 million. 518, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the release was 435 million. Right. I'm looking also at 2018, mm -hmm. 544 million was approved mm -hmm. and 270 as of September was released. That's all the figures I have for it. Great. The question I'm asking you is, mm. the people who don't care about whether there's money in this kitty or not, yeah. who only care about a quest to revive a sector, yes. they would want to use that car in some stretch like they used to do before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What specific assurance can you give that this date will have it running? Put it this way. I mean, the very figures you've quoted yes. is enough of a vindication of where we are. Remember that the, those figures you quoted are not for the very route you're talking about. It's That's for the sector. The entire sector. It's I for agree. the That's entire right. sector. Yeah. And for that matter, <clears throat> if you, if you uh, what do you call, convert that in dollar terms, I've already told you the, the construction cost mm -hmm. per kilometer. Four million per kilometer. There are, but that's, that's uh, construction On the cost. average, yeah. That's on the average. Mm -hmm. it, it sometimes has a lot more. depends on what challenges you face. You face that. You, you do face. And so what you've quoted does not really in any way, what do you call it, lo uh, lock us down as in, oh, you've got all this. What we are doing now is the public, uh, what do you call it, the education. What mm -hmm. I'm doing now is educating the public so that they do not have uh, 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 expectations beyond reali re reality. 
the fact is that we are not going around boasting and saying that we are achieving more than we actually are. But we are achieving because the sector was down. Now you can see, uh, uh, if you go on that um, Accra in Sawong Road, you will see a whole lot of men in overalls, you know, yellow and orange overalls, working. People can see for themselves. People living along that stretch are more than happy to see that. My only difficulty yes. is that mm -hmm. when in the year budget, the finance minister states that mm. we have made a massive change from a dying colonial railroad network mm. that had been re-energized yes. railroad ne sector. Yeah, yeah. And what people see and use yeah. is the evidence of the re-energized sector. Absolutely. The example in sight is the Accra in 7-1. All right. If they cannot use it, you can't purport to have had this I, sector running. You know, I think it's an unfair, uh, what do you call it, uh, 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 categorization because the Accra is a one is not the LXU. It is not the be all and end all of, uh, of our attainments. I get we, you. We have got a rehabilitated Accra uh, uh, Tamar line. Mm -hmm. We, in fact, guess what? The uh, Accra uh, is a one line was not, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, it was a case that we decided to close it because of the degraded infrastructure. Of course, it was closed in August 2017. August 2017. Yeah. The infrastructure, was, it was not due to a derailment or anything, but we were not going to wait until a disaster occurred before we did that. Now, having closed it, with no prior budgetary, what do you call it, specific budgetary allocation to that route. Remember I said we have six phases. Mm -hmm. Phase one is rehabilitation. Yeah. And then you can only do so much with whatever allocation. Like you said, 580 million was released, and how much was given? About 400 million. Yes. Out of which, in, in all, yes. so far, between 2017 mm. and 2018, yeah. As of September 2018, mm -hmm. there has been 706 million, 168,000, mm -hmm. and 65 cities released yes. to the sector in all yeah. the ministry. There are all the other things, right? Doing. That's the amount of money I'm talking about. Absolutely. You're saying that this amount of money mm -hmm. hasn't been able to extend to work required on the Accra in Salon stretch. Who is saying so? We, uh, we ha I have told you that the work is ongoing. Yes, but I'm asking about but it, uh, is remember the completion of it that will get people interested and in knowing that the work can also use it. Let, 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 remember I said I, I, uh, the, the director for regulation and assurance yes. was th out there recently uh -huh. because if you heard the sector minister, it was said mm -hmm. that what you call the line was almost you know, ready. ready, ready. Th that's what I'm interested in. That is true. In, yeah. So remember, it is one thing seeing that the line Ha, you know, there's ballast, there's sleepers, and there's, and there, and there's a uh, real track on it. It's quite another thing for the assessor, i.e. the regulator, mm -hmm. who goes on scene and sees certain things that need doing. And we do I'll, not... I'll, we, I'll we do not we so as regulator and developer at the same yeah, time. That's yeah. an interesting... So, yeah. That so, so we do not rush, bec you know, uh, timetables. Railway and safety are bedfellows. You can... I agree. They're absolute bedfellows. So mm -hmm. we will not be pressurized, so to speak by public expectations and give you an unsafe railway. Not under my... my, my but at least I expect an estimation. Well, I mean, listen, I can tell you how long... How long is it by the end of this year? How by long the is, end of this year, can the people is, within that stretch use it? How long is a piece of string? It depends on the string. Precisely. You but know, but uh, you have been there. You no, have seen the rail. Well, you have worked on it. You listen, have competent men who have done extraordinary see, work And on then this again, rail. when you quote all those sums, yes. I've indicated to you that, for instance, all that sum you're talking about, 20 yeah. million of that was used for new construction on the Western Line. I see. Yes. Mm. 20 million of that was used. And for that matter, it is not all just liner. And then we've successfully completed the Accra Tema Line. We have done, like I said, quite a 60 you know, to 80 percent uh, uh, on, on the um, uh, 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 Takradi to, to, to Takwa stretch. So it is, it is a whole... It's interesting it's a, to tell me the... Percentage down on the Takwa well, I mean, Taka stretch. But when it comes to Accra Tema, which uh, is. No, I know Accra Tema, Accra and Sawam. Accra and Sawam, yeah. which is. And I'm saying this because yeah. I know people can make easy reference to Accra Tema, Accra and Sawam. Mm -hmm. They know them. Yeah. The Takwa the ones is basically, you know, goods and other things. So some of us mm -hmm. they they don't have it. any history to it. Yeah. So that's what I'm asking whether. And I've had calls, people asking. So when can the people move from Sawam to Accra using the real Like they used to do some time ago. Yes. It is our, our goal, our aim, our dream to have that line, uh, what do you call it, in a safe state. If you go there now, you will see that, yes, all the line, the, the line is there right up to Insabom. But is that all you are after? 
that there is a line? No, no, no. no I think that to the consumer, being able to ply that route, sit in the train, precisely. is what they want. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm telling you why, even though the line is done to, to uh, in Sawam, mm -hmm. yet the regulator has not passed it. So you, a regulator is a statutory what body. What is the main inhibiting factor today? Well, the fact that what you call certain uh, uh, areas on the stretch need more uh, fortification than what you call than the funds available have been able to, pro to provide. So, of course, we will not ju uh, just rush and open the line. So, a timing will depend on the availability of funds? Uh, th there is a request in the budget which will definitely be on it. A request in 2019 budget? Yes. But we are in October. I, I appreciate that. And we are barely left with three months well, or two I, months. I, I appreciate that. We are thinking outside the box. We, the minister, I'm sure, and in our, in ourselves would uh, find a way of, uh, of, of uh, circling that, uh, uh, you know, that, 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 that problem. Can the people of Insawam move to Accra via that particular train route by the end of this year? I hope so. But you don't have a firm commitment in it. I cannot give you... You know, I'm, I, I don't live in, a, in, 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 in an utopia. I appreciate that. I don't that. live in a utopia. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm, a, I'm a realist, and I do not want... And the know, main I'm, factor is the money factor. The main factor is that the line needs fortification in certain areas where the budget cannot stretch to okay, reach. Okay, I get your point. Precisely. Now, I, I'll move beyond Accra and so on. Yes. Because, I mean, that's a very interesting area to Absolutely. dwell a little bit yeah. on. Yeah. Before I transition to other areas, yeah. because... It's, and I'm looking, I'm not talking about the northern part yet. Mm -hmm. It's western and eastern I'm looking at so far. Great. Now, the something that came up, how different is your job from that of the minister? I know mostly ministers are for policy and general direction. Mm -hmm. But how different is your job from that of the minister, beyond the policy part? Well, I do not think that any sector is different, yeah, any sector ministry. Yeah. No matter, you know, what name it goes by, is different in terms of um, its standing. Mm -hmm. you know, in, in within the public service and that kind okay. of thing, that ministries or ministers direct policy. Okay. Agencies comply with ministerial mm -hmm. directives. Agencies do the running, the implementation of policy. Now, let me get this also clarified yeah. in this case. Um, you did say, and I've heard many talk about your authority has been both one that's engaged sometimes in development mm -hmm. and other times in regulation. Is that not contradictory and conflicting? In a sense, you might be right in that regard. Yeah. And yes, um, in a properly uh, 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 set up, when I say no, 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 that's not the right... Uh, in an advanced system. system. In an advanced system, we'll have a proper network, railway network. You shouldn't have both the, uh, in one uh, uh, department or authority, the regulator and the developer. And that will change. Are there plans to change that? The, of course. I mean, <clears throat> that require because it's uh, Act 779, the Railways yeah. Act, mm -hmm. you know, created this anomaly. Yeah. So it will require a parliamentary amendment, you know, to Is the there Act. a bill in the offing? Uh, the minister has that in the offing. Okay. So yeah. when are we going to get that happening? Well, this, it depends on parliamentary time. Oh, but, oh, oh, you already laid a bill in parliament? Well, he, uh, he, Listen, this is the ministerial side, so I'm not going to... Oh, no, no but just, of course. No, no, so maybe, I thought you had so, information. So, no, 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 I'm not going to... Yeah, so <laughs> I, I thought he had briefed I know, you on he, when I, he's going I to Parliament. I do know he's got plans. But, okay. but put it this way. Mm -hmm. I think it's almost like a red herring in our situation oh, okay. to make it appear as if uh, the, the, the legal regime mm -hmm. has anything to do with the power of state of, uh, of the railway sector. Oh, Nothing no, to do, I'm, no. I'm not saying that. You know, and for that I'm matter, that and for that matter in my opinion, it is not even a priority. I know you're a lawyer. Yes. <laughs> Some complain that mm. an institution responsible for development yeah. equally doing regulation is problematic. Yeah. That, that's what I wanted to get clarity yeah. on already. Yeah. I mean, at the moment, we are still at the scratching phase. Okay. You know, and for that matter, in terms of prioritization, it should be as regards you know, getting money, funds to develop you know, the new lines and to rehabilitate old lines. Because one of the achievements mm. the ministry said they had done mm. in the year 2018 going into 2019, mm -hmm. in its planned budget, what they call it, the program budget estimates, mm. is that it did a review of the Ghana Railway Act at 779 to pave way for the restructuring of the sector and the creation of new agencies. That's what I was interested in when that review would finally make you <coughs> do one and do it excellently. As far as I know, the minister is. Uh, quite, de uh, what do you call it, dedicated to this, uh, to this eventuality. Okay, mm. I get you. Mm. Now, we're talking about what's happening mm. on the 
side to do it, Accra, Takwa, Kumase stretch. Mm -hmm. Has it been fully renovated or rehabilitated? I thought we, we <laughs> I touched on that. That's Accra. You mean the, um, when, when you talk about Takwa and whatnot, you talk about Western Line. Yes. So don't talk about uh, Accra. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Okay, so Western Line starts from uh, uh, Takwadi mm -hmm. through to Kumasi. That's it, yeah. 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 And so there, you I've told you that we are doing two things there. Mm -hmm. One, the rehabilitation of the existing narrow gauge line and the construction of the new standard gauge line. And of that, I've told you that Amandi are doing the first 22 kilometers. We've okay. signed a contract with Wuju for the continu continuation from kilometer 23 up to 100 kilometers further forward, you know, and that's at Dunkwa. And when will they finish that? It is projected for October 20, uh, 2020. That is the, uh, what they call the, um, the Wuju one, which is kilometer 23 up to uh, uh, Dunkwa. Okay, so by this time next year? That is, that is the projection, October 2020. Okay, th that's a wonderful show to know. Mm -hmm. How far would the talk on integrated light rail system, transit system? Yeah. In that event, you're talking about Accra and Kumasi. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the Mas the master plan which I, I showed you, yeah. you see some bubbles. Now these bubbles, if you come yeah, and the see. one at Tamale, they are Techiman, yeah. Kumasi, yeah. then there's one at Second yeah. Accra and also Ho, yeah. That's right. Admittedly, this is the current master plan. Yeah. Remember I said there's a review of yeah, the master, master plan. plan yeah. And that review will take into consideration the six new constituencies. Sorry, uh, 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 what do you call it, regions mm -hmm. that have been created. And so the bubbles actually denote regional capitals uh, or, uh, and their densities. Okay, I get okay. you. And, um, but because of the scarcity of funds, of course, we need to prioritize which regional capitals, you know, would benefit more, you know, uh, with, 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 with the introduction of light railways. And for that matter, we're looking at Accra and Kumasi. Now, with Kumasi, um, we have a, what do you call a transactional advisor who is um, leading through the, what you call, feasibility studies. Mm -hmm. Because all of these things involve pre-feasibility studies okay. and uh, to see the cost, the challenges, before we then invite, as it were, interested bidders who would have a clear picture in front of them about what the challenges are in front of them. With Accra, yeah. uh, you would have heard about SkyTrain. Um, yes. Yes, you would have and, heard. And, and the news reports suggest we've launched SkyTrain. We have actually talked about some amount of money involved. Yes, I, I'm just quoting news reports. <laughs> 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 what, what I can tell you yes. is, and, I th and there's no contradiction there, yeah. is that SkyTrain are doing feasibility studies after, at the end of which, yeah, at the end of which, uh, what do you call numbers will, will, you know, will be crunched, you know, and uh, they will see whether it's, uh, it's a project that... Um, you know, they, they would like to, 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 to pursue. Okay, so yeah. let's be clear. Mm. We have not decided we are going to do sky trains yet. We have this... No, you are, make, you are, you are, you are mistaken there. No. There's nothing like sky trains. Sky train is the name of a company. I, uh, I, I, <laughs> sorry, let, yeah. let's take it slow. Yeah, yeah. Now... You said sky trains yet. <laughs> no, so I, need, okay. I needed to correct no. that. Yeah. So, yeah. so, for example, yeah. I'm reading from graphic.com.j that said mm -hmm. that the government on Thursday signed an agreement with South African company, mm -hmm. Africa Investment Skytrain Consortium, right. for the construction of the Accra Skytrain project. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. The question I'm asking in this case is, when are we going to do the project? A six, uh, uh, I think it was nine months feasibility study period was given to Skytrain. Okay. At the end of which... Yeah, because mm -hmm. remember, this is <laughs> it's not but, our money. But we have exceeded the nine month period. No. It was done in November 20. Well, it was, it was extended. It was extended. It was extended. And so it is not completed yet. And once they complete their pre, uh, the, the feasibility studies, then we'll be in a position to talk certainties. Okay, mm. so we don't know when that's going to happen. Actually. Well, no, no, we're talking about the end of the six month period. Mm -hmm. Sorry, nine month period. Yeah, at the end of that, we will be uh, able to talk certainly as regards because once they take it up, that okay, we think that the numbers add up, we can invest in this. So, when are we going to start construction? If we had the money, mm -hmm. we can give you those dates. Okay, but SkyTrain is remember, I said a company mm -hmm. who are doing a feasibility study, it is they and their 
bankers who at the end of their feasibility studies will will do the call it's not okay. our call it's, it's, the it depends on who stated that yeah. by january 2020 yeah. we should start the construction of the project has it changed now i'm not contradicting him at all because at the end of the day he's uh, he and and I, and I have reason to be optimistic mm. that skytrain have done some little work on their own before the official feasibility studies and they believe that the numbers will, will, will add up for them to do it so it's, it's a confidence conf, confidence talk yeah the question i'm asking is whether in 2020 january we'll mm. start the construction in 2020 january once sky trains take up the challenge then we we start construction so there are so many other factors that may determine that happening at the end of the day it is not gog money Yes. So we cannot make that call. Categorical. categorical except it sounded that more categorical to me when the minister made it. Well, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure he, had, he had reason to say what he said. Mm. Yeah. Do you have any reason to believe Skytree will fail us? No. Not at all? I don't have no any reason. Because remember, at the end of the day, like I said, they came make, making a bidding even before anything was thrown out to the public in terms of uh, expressions of interest. Oh, th that's interesting. Yeah. So they came making a bidding. And they, like I said, have done their own preliminary work and they believe that it would work out yeah. what's happening mm. to the eastern uh, no, what's happening to the trans ECOWAS and central lines trans ECOWAS, you would have um, read in the papers last thing last sometime last week or so the um, an MOU was signed between the ministry and uh, w w w w one group you know just to do uh, I mean, it's an MOU, and as you know, with an MOU, yeah. uh, at the end of all considerations, if uh, uh, you know they think it is something they would like to take up, and we have done uh, our due diligence on them and their capability to finance it, then we proceed. Kumase mm. to Paga. Kumase, that's central. That's central spine. Yeah. Remember, I said out of the one billion dollars that the minist uh, minister of finance uh, gave us from the two billion CDB loan. Mm -hmm. The other 500 million was plowed into the central spine, okay. which is from uh, Kumasi going toward the north. And of, how co far? of course, that will not go anywhere in terms of distance. Looking at the quantum, but it's a start. Okay, it's a start. So, and and there is a Chinese company called CCECC. We are plans to get more money for it. I mean, that money will not reach enough. So, of course, yes, it's a start. To get more money of for course, it. yeah. Where are we going to get the money from? I mean, we have. The various funding models. We have got a BOT, we've got PPP, we've got even barter system. Is that a project that can see fruition and people can use this rail line before the year 2020 ends? 2020? Yes. Which line are you talking about? I Central about the, yes, Kumasi to Paga. We, number one, all yeah. of these things are, uh, uh, there's a predicate that money must be there in the first instance. Yes, China, uh, what do you call it, has a promise to release mm -hmm. the, the $2 billion. I get you. The money has not arrived yet. Until the money arrives, we at the moment, you know, have an agreement in principle. But uh, and we have a contractor, in, you know, who may be in place to, to take it up. But the money has to come first. My guest in studio mm. on today's upfront yeah. is the man who spent 23 years in the UK working rail lines. Who is here to fix your rail lines? His name is a Dumbo. <laughs> but this one is Richard Diedong Dumbo. And we'll be talking about the vision to make sure that we have a once again functioning rail system in this country. After the break, we'll continue our conversation. Welcome back. This is Upfront. My name is Raymond Dakwa. And the conversation we'll be having tonight is what's been happening to our railway sector. I did read to you what the promise was to revive that sector, give it life bring it back to prominence so that people can have the transportation they used to have some time ago. And I'm asking today with the man who is leading and spearheading the efforts in that area at the Ghana Railway Development Authority. He is Richard Diedong Dombo. And I'll be asking, after 706 million Ghana cities, how much of that has really seen transformation on the ground? What has happened to our railway system after government devoted and released 706 million Ghana cities into that particular sector. If you've been part of this conversation, we'll be talking about a lot about what's been happening on Akatema, Akansa, when we'll be talking about what's been happening on the Eastern Line and the Western Line. They were left off on the point to do with what they call the Central Spine, mm -hmm. which is Kumasi to Paga. See what's been happening on that particular stretch too. You will come back once again. Thank you. Now, there's another important one that 
is dear to government's heart. Mm -hmm. Tema Impakadan. The last conversation government put out there was about some engagement to communities to intensify smooth implementation of that 97 kilometer one. Mm -hmm. How far with that project? I'm, I mean, very far advanced. Very far advanced. Um, at the moment, they, they have laid, actually laid tracks. Oh, about okay. 20, 24, uh, 20, 24 kilometers of it have been mm. laid. Um, it's not been without challenges, and the challenges is not technical. Challenges is all about land acquisition. Oh, yeah. And encroachment on railway uh, right of way. Um, so with that, the, the, the contract effectiveness was from um, July 2018 for three-year period, which means July 2021. But... The contractor is confident, and I am confident because of the work that is being done, that they will be able to deliver by June 2020. Okay. Yeah. And like I said, as of, uh, as of now, about 24 kilometers of rail have actually been laid. That's now. about one third of it. That's about one third of it. Okay. And the rest of it, we, like I said, we're still uh, uh, overcoming issues of encroachment. Mm. Because now, and the, 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 the issue of but there were, there were engagements with communities. Mm. What's still the problem? Why haven't we been able to move them? There are two issues here. There is the issue of encroachment, and there's the issue of uh, 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 executive instruments using that to acquire, mm -hmm. compulsorily, if you like. Yeah. Okay. With the EI, there's no issue because there's compensation. Yeah. You understand? So you know you will have to go because... When you clear them, you pay them. You, you will get your... The last commission yeah. go to do the valuation, and then we pay you. Okay. But the issue is with our sensitivity, because we, uh, we, the com that's where community engagement term comes in, mm -hmm. i.e., we are not going in like um, a bull in a china shop. We are not insensitive to the communities that the line is traversing. And for that matter, even where it is our land, and there are... There are 26 kilometers of land from, uh, from Tema through to around Efienia. That's about 26 kilometers. Mm -hmm. All that is existing railway land, called ROW, right of way. There, because the sector was dead, or in Kumatos, for all, as long as it was, a whole lot of encroachment took place. Mm. And there are, you know, we have, of course, the minister has issued his edict and um, a lot of basically told them that if you are encroaching, we will demolish you, you get no compensation. Now, there are some areas where there are particular issues of sensitivity, where we've had to bring in the MCEs, you know, the chiefs and whatnot to indicate, yes, it is railway land. Yes, we have the right to evict you with a compensation, you know, but we want to see how much we can accommodate you because we're entitled to 100 feet either end of the railway line. Okay. But out of the goodness of our heart, we, we've agreed to re reduce it down to about 50 feet from but either end of the railway line. That particular 100 feet thing is actually a corridor. It's a corridor. Yes. It's a corridor purchased under the colonial... Yes, that's what I'm saying. So what's the big deal with having to revise it that one? It's huge. Because of the level of encroachment. Oh, okay. We the can't just move them. We have to we, you know, we, we, we could. Ethiopia did it. We what's could. What's the safety but risk to that? It's not safety. Um, 50, km, uh, 50 meter, uh, feet, feet away is safe it's okay. enough. Yeah, it's safe enough. Okay, I see. But the corridor, as big as it would be, would be a source of revenue in mm. terms of if you see developed countries, railway corridors are you know areas of advertisement, adver areas of uh, as what we call associated rail infrastructure. The report mm. from the ministry suggests that mm. as of September 2018, mm -hmm. 70 percent of the land required had been acquired. Mm -hmm. Today, how much has been acquired? As far as I'm concerned we have got 100% of oh, land 100% acquired. Acquired. So what we have now is issue of lands commission and their valuation. Okay. And that is the issue, but not mm. the issue of uh, whether or not the land has been made. Because the contract effectiveness has to do with you giving land to the contractor, pay the contractual stipulations, 70% by this date, 100% by this date. Now, mm -hmm. the overall completion project as of September 2018 stood at 25%. Mm -hmm. What is the percentage today? Of completion. Like I yes. said, about 24 kilometers of actual rail. What does that translate into? 
um, in terms of percentage, as of yeah. 97, uh, well, you do the sum, so I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can do I'm so not, quickly, I'm but not a mathematician. That it was in mind, no, yes. I mean, because the, uh, the, you know, when we talk about real I, construction, I you, yes. it's not just about laying the tracks and, I get you. you know, there are a whole lot of other, you know, infrastructural work mm -hmm. that, that will indicate that there is progress. So in terms of progress, you can see we are, we are close to 80% progress. But in terms of actual track lane, yeah. do the sums in terms of 24 kilometers out of 97. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I'll, I'll do so right away. Yeah. But okay, so we are looking yeah. at 24 percent, or 25 percent actually. That's what it well, is today. And the, the and so the that means that since September 2018, not much has changed. Absolutely, a lot has changed. As of September 2018, Sorry, we, we had. Me. Hang on. As I, of I, September I'm 2018, saying that the minister's report suggests that yeah. as of September 2018. Yes. The overall completion of the project stood at 25%. Yes. Today, mm -hmm. what you tell me about the stretch completion mm -hmm. is still around 24.7 yeah, to 25%. You are confusing two items. I said the actual track lane is that 25%. What the minister talked about was not track lane. He said overall track completion. Mm -hmm. And I did tell you that in the real construction, it's not all about just the, the track lane. I get it, you. Yes. And so... So presumably, the... Completion would have to be way lower than the actual track lane, or? No. Completion is actually higher than the actual track lane. Because really? the, what the minister talked about was 25%. And mm -hmm. in that regard, we are over 60% now. That is the track lane? That, no. What the minister was talking about was not track lane. He never he it never says the overall that. completion, completion of the current project yes. stands at 25%. Project? Yes. And project is, does not specify track lane. It's part of. Okay. And so I'm telling you that... That statement is correct, yeah, and has improved beyond that twenty-five percent to over sixty percent now. Okay, overall, so now you're at sixty percent overall on this tema in Pakadem, Akosobo used mm -hmm. to be called some along the line. Yeah. Now there's an interesting mm -hmm. uh, route, the interconnectivity project, mm -hmm. Ghana Burkina Faso. Yeah, how far with that? Right, we on that one. Um, in fact, a team, the, the minister himself, mm -hmm. was in Burkina Faso last week. Um, <clears throat> On that one, uh, we are down to about four, four bidders from, uh, from an e initial 11 thereabouts, 11, 12 thereabouts. Okay. We're down to four. We are confident that before the year, year's end, that probably we'll, we'll have a preferred, uh, what do you call it, contractor. But what is happening is that because of the sheer volume of that uh, project, you know, talking about close to 800 kilometers, and quantify that for uh, an average of four million times that we're talking about close to four billion billion dollars okay so we are moving steadily steadily and cautiously in the sense that of the four remaining we are not rushing to just say okay you you've met all uh, uh, our technical specifications and financial and paper business we are doing due diligence on those four and once we are set, are certain that those four can all progress to the next stage, okay. you know, and, 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 and take the financial box as well, then, we, then the, the processes will, will, will continue our pace. Speed trains. Here in the studio, mm. in fact, he called it bullet trains. Mm -hmm. The man, Dr. Mensa, Thomas, Thomas Mensa, mm -hmm. gave an elaborate plan on how this particular system is supposed to work out nicely. Mm -hmm. A system he feels that's the way forward for Ghana, mm -hmm. and others already implementing it, and said across the country can travel within a very short distance. Mm -hmm. Has this idea been inculcated into your work yet? Are you building speed trains anytime soon? <laughs> let, me assure, ones. let me assure you that in the sector we're in, yeah. a whole lot of ideas come up. Okay, a whole lot. So this is maybe this stood out because he's Dr. Thomas Mensah. Yes. But it is not as if um, <clears throat> we are not ambitious. Mm -hmm. It is not nothing to do with ambition. In fact, we have improved our sp speed element. I get you. The, but the, I'm the narrow whether you have taken up this speed no, train idea. No, no, no. We have not taken up that. So you're not going to build speed trains for Ghanaians anytime soon. Let me tell you. What did I just say about the average cost of a of a kilometer. Very expensive. So but far, that so is for yeah. normal high speed. What, you call, what, what you're talking about is yeah. high speed. Yeah. The infrastructure for a high speed train is absolutely and totally different from you, you know, speeds of up to 160 kilometers. So is it cost effective for that is, like Ghana? Let me tell you something, eye watering. It will cost you no less than about $30 million per kilometer to construct a high speed train, a high speed train line. 
It doesn't look feasible to me. Well, there you go. So it is for a country whose GDP is just over 40 something mil billion, mm -hmm. you know, and then we're talking about high speed. High speed to where in the, anyway? Is that from <laughs> the south to the north? That's my point. If at the moment we have a, a train, at the, uh, the, the, the old lines that we had, we're going like 60 kilometers at most 80. The, even when you talk about the sleeper, that's probably going like 50 kilometers per hour. Well, we've elevated the speed to 160 kilometers per hour. Are we ready for the high speed trains? Not, I mean, listen, you have to learn to crawl, to stand, to walk, to run. You cannot just start from zero to 100. I get well, you. You understand? Mm -hmm. Especially where you are constrained by finance. My last question to you yes. is, what's the biggest achievement of your sector today? The railway sector or the, yes, the railway, railway sector, authority? Yes. No, no, the authority, yeah. more importantly. Yeah, the authority, yes. Um, I inherited a, a, an authority that was not fit for purpose. Just about 11 personnel who certainly couldn't do the work that it is uh, legally mandated to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so I started off by taking an, uh, an uh, overview of, of the uh, organogram. Mm -hmm. with, the, with the assistance of the Public Services Commission, we now have an optimum number of 78, okay. you know, to, to do a functional you know, railway uh, service. So have requisite engineers in-house now, you know, and, uh, and we're able to... to By the end of 2020, mm -hmm. what will be your biggest achievement? By the end of 2020, the authority or the sector? The authority. The authority. By the end of 2020, I should have had my full complement of staff who will be able to complement the work that is being done by independent co uh, co uh, consultants at the moment. I get your point, but the entire sector? In terms of the entire sector, we would have had the, the completion of the uh, Tama, uh, what do you call it, Empakadan line. Mm -hmm. We have had the commencement, uh, what do you call, uh, 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 of uh, the, the central spine. Mm -hmm. We would have had the commencement of the eastern line. We would have had, what do you call, the, 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 co the commencement of, what do you call, uh, kilometer 23 on the western line. We would have completed rehabilitation of, 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 of the rehabil those lines that require re rehabilitation. We would have, as it were, st uh, struck ground for the commencement of metro lines in Kumasi and Accra. We, you see, this gives you, a, a, what do you call it, a clear picture that we have a, a basket okay. of activities. That's interesting. You know, we have a basket. We, we are not just, that's why, look that's at, why. Look at your trend mm, of financing. That's why look I will not, that's why I refuse allocation. to be buttonholed yeah. on, let's say, Accra in Sawam. Yeah. Because I know we're doing a whole lot of okay. other things. I get your point. Yeah. And, and I'm concluding mm. on this. Yeah. Do you want to be president? Do I want to be president? Yes. Absolutely not. I mean, you are SD the most son. But my father was not president. Yes, your father was not president. But the main pillars in the Dankot Buzia tradition, yes. clearly, you are one of them. But that has nothing to do with presidency. I'm asking whether you want to be president. No, I don't aspire to that. Why? Because it is not my calling. I am, I, I am a politician, but I, you know, it's not my calling. I don't, I don't intend to be a president. Mr. Dobby, <laughs> thank you so much for joining thank us here today. <laughs> well, folks, that's where we end today's edition of Upfront. Many thanks to you for watching. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha.